It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl today. Two great elementary schools vying for the chance to go on to become possibly one of our final four in this year's competition. Let's meet today's teams. First from Cora Rice Elementary, would you say hello please to Tony Babayeju, Theophan Tasu, and Rakem Young. And from Montpelier Elementary, here they are, Matthew DeMick, Mary Garns, and Jeffrey Achampong. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with the easier questions on the left. They're worth five and 10 points. The tougher ones are worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And at the end of the two rounds, we will have a possible finalist for this year's competition. Let's go over and make sure everything's working properly. Let's go to the red team. Thea Fan, would you try your buzzer for me? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, to Rakem and to Tony. Mary, would you try the Montpelier buzzer? It too looks like it's in fine working order. Good luck to you, Jeffrey and to Matthew. Are we ready? Let's do this thing. Congratulations on making it this far in our competition. We're proud of all of you guys. Let's have a good game. We go alphabetically C before M. So Cora Rice, Thea Fan, let's play the bowl. Um, body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points is a multiple choice question. Teams, a vascular biologist recently was able to grow in his lab arteries, muscles, or nerves. Arteries. Okay, Cora Rice. Arteries. Arteries, because vascular refers to blood vessels, and an artery is a kind of blood vessel. You put them together, that's why you guys are doing well. Go, red. Um, Dayline signs for 15. Dayline signs for 15 points. Teams, back in 1957, a man by the name of Gordon Gould came up with a device that he called light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. He said, that's too long. Cora Rice. Laser. Yeah, he said, let's shorten that and call it a laser, L-A-S-E-R, for the first letters of all of those words. Absolutely right. Good. Cora Rice. I'm um, Zupre for 15. Zuprayed for 15 points, teams, is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. The star dragon in How to Train... <laughs> Mary yelled toothless. She didn't need any kind of clue from me whatsoever. She's absolutely right. Toothless, yeah, the star dragon in How to Train Your Dragon 2 might have belonged to the mammal order known as Edentates because he has no teeth, and his name is, as Mary told us, Toothless. Mary, I like your enthusiasm, but make sure you ring in first so we can recognize you. Okay, go green. Um, Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, because of what they wear, NFL referees are often called these striped, Cora Rice. Zebras. Zebras, these striped equ uh, equines, absolutely. Matthew knew it too, he just didn't get Mary to push that buzzer, buzzer fast enough. Go red. Oh, okay. Body Sisters for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, Billy Rubin sounds like the kid that sits across the aisle from you. But Billy Rubin is a reddish brown pigment found in bile juice that's produced when the blood breaks down. What kind of H initial pigment, Cora Rice? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, yes. The breakdown of hemoglobin produces this pigment called bilirubin. Absolutely. Thank you, for Rakem, for your assist on that. Nicely done. Go, Theophan. Science book for 15. 
Science Boat Brief for 15 points. Teams, the 12 signs of the zodiac are 12 of the 88 of these Cora Rice. Constellations? Yeah, const there are 88 constellations, and the 12 signs of the zodiac are 12 of those 88. Thank you, Tony, for your assist. Go red. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, botanists looking for clues as to past global warming are looking at these fossilized plant. Um, Montpelier. Fossil fuel? Not fossil fuels, no. Cora Rice, what kind of fossilized plant parts that we associate with allergens are what the botanists are studying for those clues. Leaves. 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 Pollen. Pollen associated with allergies. That would have been your clue there. That's what we were hoping you'd get. 120 to 65 advantage, still red. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, of all the 100 plus elements on the periodic table of elements, the one with the shortest name, with just three letters, has the chemical symbol SN. We know it as this metal Cora Rice. Tin. Tin. Tin, that's right. The only, the shortest name on the periodic table. Exactly. Go red. Mm. Um, Zupre for, for 25. Zupre for 25, the big one in that category. All right, teams, put on your thinking caps. I know you know this when it's a big, long word. A well-known writer recently said when she was younger, boy, I wish I had read this. Hippopotamus. Not hippopotamus, no. Cora Rice, this famous writer said, when I was a kid, I wish I had read this book, which was written by Franz Kafka about a man who changes into a giant bug. Cora Rice. Butterfly? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, the changing of egg to larva to pupa to adult. Of course, it's not a true story. It was a uh, one that you read and you uh, keep the lights on. Go red. Zupre for 20. Zupre for 20 points. Teams, scorpions and spiders belong to this class. Arachnids. Cora Rice. Cora Rice. Anthropods. What's your answer, please? Anthropods? Anthropods, yeah. No, not anthropods, no. Montpelier, spiders and scorpions belong to this class of arthropods, all of which have eight legs, and a lot of people are phobic because they're afraid of them. Name that class. Arachnophobic. Arachnophobic or arachnids, absolutely right. I know, Rakem, you yelled that up, but again, you hadn't rung in, and I wanted to make sure what your consensus answer was. All right, first round is over. The bell has sounded. Let's check that score. It is Montpelier 85, Cora Rice 85. We'll be back with round two of Science Bowl in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back to Science Bowl. So good to have you here today. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. We've got six outstanding young people here, three of whom who have been here twice already this year. The team from Cora Rice and the team from Montpelier got a bye in the first round because they did so well in last year's competition. Let's go over and talk to them all. Let's go over to Cora Rice, a school that is up there by FedEx Field and uh, a relatively recent addition to Science Bowl. You've been here for just a couple years and boy, you've done a great job. You have a great coach over there, Mr. Baker. Who is the principal at Cora Rice, the event? Ms. Terman. Ms. Terman, and I, she's supporting you guys. And I know you had alternates on your team, or an alternate, didn't you? Who is that? Um, 
Zainab. Zainab, and we'll, we'll bring Zainab about in just a few moments along with Mr. Baker. Tell me about Cora Rice. Uh, it's a great school. I've been over there a number, I went to your science fair last year. What do you like about your school? Um, well, well, the teachers are good and we participate in a lot of field trips too. Man, boy, field trips are great. They're good enrichment activities. You go out and you see a lot of the things that you studied in the classroom, so field trips are real important. And Thea Fan, what do you want to do someday? I want to be an electrical engineer. Yeah, I can see you're a very methodical young man. You're disciplined and you're a good math student too. Good to have you back. For Kim, how do you know so much science? Um, I just, I, I don't know how I know, but Because you guess, do, you yeah. do. Yeah, I, I guess I can say I study. Um, I'm not saying that it's not true because it is true that I do study, but I mean, it's You're a just, humble guy yeah. and you're doing all the right things and you keep up with the news and you do what your teachers say and you, uh, we like having you here. What do you want to do someday? Become a basketball player. Yeah, I know you like to play basketball. I know you like to read and you like to play video games. You're, you're, you're just a normal guy enjoying, uh, enjoying being young. Yes. And uh, I, I like having you and I like how you play the game. Tony? You want to be, you're an athlete as well. You play football, you play soccer, you play for the Pepper Ridge football, Pepper Mill, Pepper Pepper Mill football team. And what position you play? A um, wide receiver. Wide receiver, that's great. You want to be professional someday? Nah, not really. Yeah, that's a, that's a long shot, isn't it? Very few make it to the pro ranks. You're a smart guy. What do you want to do professionally? Uh, become maybe an uh, herpetologist or some, something that has to do with science. Yeah. Herpet we were just talking about herpetology because Prozon Das, who used to be the captain of the Cora Rice team, also wanted to be a herpetologist. And uh, I know he went on to great things, uh, winning the championship last year with Kenmore. Nice to have you back, Tony. Montpelier, nice to have you guys here for the first time. You're all fourth graders over there. Miss Clamage, Bella Clamage, great sponsor. We've been with us for years and years. She always sends us great students. And you're all wearing matching jerseys over there. What do they say, Mary? Um, they say Montpelier. Elementary. Science, Science Bowl. Bowl team, yeah. And what's the mascot at Montpelier? A bulldog. A bulldog. You got a couple little bulldogs there. What are their names? Monty and Monty too. Monty and Monty too. They've been here before. They usually bring you good luck and yeah. hopefully they will today too. Who's your principal, Mary? Miss Frello. Miss Frello. And she's been out there for a long time. I know how much she supports you as well. And who's the alternate on your team? Serena. Serena. She'll come out in just a few moments with Miss Clamage. And uh, I'll ask you, Mary, what I asked the fan. What do you like to brag about when you tell people about Montpelier? What do you like about it? Um, I like how almost all of the teachers are nice, and Miss Furlow comes up with fun things to do, and we have some awesome specials teachers. Awesome teachers. I like that adjective. And if school is fun, and it seems like it is there, it's a place you want to go. And you're going to learn, and you're going to want to please the people that are working so hard for you. Mary, someday, what are you going to do? I want to be a teacher for fourth or third grade. Wow, so you'd like to teach people like you someday when you get a little bit older. I think that's a great, noble ambition. And you're, going to, you're a good captain, too. And you have to kind of get in your groove here, you know, and uh, figure out how this game works all in 20 minutes. And it's, it's a big challenge, but you're up to it. Jeffrey, nice to have you here today. You have a younger brother, yes? Yes. And uh, I know he looks up to you. And you want to be a doctor someday. And what else? A journalist, huh? Yeah. Why a journalist? Well, 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 well I, I'm like about a year ago, I figured out I, I, have a, I, I, I have a skill for imagining things. Yeah. So if you can imagine things and tell stories about it, you know, that's what a lot of these movies are that we go to see today. They're people who had these wonderful ideas in their head and, you know, they put them on paper and now it's on film. Nice to have you here, Jeffrey. Matthew, nice to have you here. Your sister was here last year. You're following in her footsteps and uh, I know she's real proud of you. Matthew, what do you do in your spare time? Um, I like to draw and read books and play outside. That's great. What kind of books do you like? Um, I like action books and comics. That's great. And what do you want to do someday? Um, I want to be an astronaut and discover a new planet that people can live on. Wow. And we know we're trying to get to Mars because we think that might be habitable. Venus is out of the question. It's too hot. Most of the other ones are too far. So yeah, we got our work cut out for us, right? Because we're not doing such a good job with this planet Earth here. Well, we'll be able to look up someday and say we know that guy because you're going to be in space. Let's get back to our game. 85 for Montpelier, 135 for Cora Rice. Lots of points to give away. Last correct answer came from the green team. So, Mary, start us out. Um, 25. 
Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. All right, the tough question in that category, teams. 200 years ago, Isaac Newton explained how plants can defy gravity, how water in plants can go up against gravity because at the top in the leaves, these little openings called stomata would open up and what process then would create the pressure to make that water go up? What process is occurring, Cora Rice? Photosynthesis? Not photosynthesis. Yeah. What kind of, pr what pr process would cause that water then to move Blooming? up against gravity? Try blooming. Try blooming? No. Ring. Oh, no, no, blooming. no, you don't have to ring the buzzer. Okay, no. blooming. No, not blooming. Oh. The correct answer is evaporation. As water evaporates, it creates kind of a suction and pulls the water. And I know you guys were thinking about that. You thought, maybe that's too simple. Try again, Mary. Um. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. A visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Teams, you've heard about kale. Kale is the new hot vegetable. They're growing kale here inside of a greenhouse, but there's no soil. They're growing it in water, and that is known by what H initial term when you grow plants that way, Cora Rice. What you want to tell me? Hydro farming? Hydro farming. That's a good guess. That's a very good guess. Not quite. What H initial term describes heat. plants that are grown without soil? Um, heat forming. Heat forming? It's called hydro. Let's finish it for me. Uh, Hydroponic. Hydroponic farming. It's a tough question. That's why it was worth 20 points. Try again, Green. Let's get something we can get. Okay, okay. So, um, body cells um, for 10. Body systems for 10? Body systems for 10 points. Two-part answer. I need both. Everybody listen to me, please. During the Super Bowl, there was a commercial with the voice of the late President Kennedy talking to us about our connection to the sea. He said, our blood has salt in it, and so too do these two body fluids that we produce that contain salt. All right, what do you want to tell me, Cora Rice? Blood. I already gave you blood. Give me the two others. Montpelier, can you give me the other two fluids that we produce that contain salt? Blood contains salt. What are the other two? Sweat and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. Try again, Green. Mary, come on. Um, Dateline Science for 20. Dateline Science for 20 points. All right, teams, let's see if you know your famous scientists. This man, Thomas Edison, invented this machine, and the first thing that it played was Mary uh, what? Uh, Montpelier. Phonograph. Photograph. Photograph. Phonograph. Phonograph. Say it again, please. Phonograph. Phonograph. Matthew, say it. Phonograph. Phonograph. Exactly right. A phonograph. And the first thing it played was Mary had a little lamb. Okay. Thank you. Go green. Um. um uh, uh, Zoo parade for 10. Zoo parade for 10 points. Teams, on old maps of Africa, early explorers sometimes wrote on there, here be dragons. Because early explorers, when they saw these huge, dangerous reptiles, they thought they were dragons. Crocodiles? What did they see, Montpelier? Crocodiles? Yes, indeed. That's what I want to hear. Good. Go. See what um, happens when you listen to the clues? Go. Green things for 10, please. Green things for 10 points. Teams, in Africa, bicycles are made of this fast-growing grass that has high tensile strength. Cora Rice, what do you want to tell me? Kemp. Kemp. What do you want to tell me? Kemp. Not temp, no. Montpelier, in Africa, bicycles are made of this fast-growing grass Stop. that has high tensile strength. Listen to what I have to say. It is also the favorite food of bamboo, of, of, of pandas. Straw. Just straw. Straw? Actually, it was bamboo. We gave the answer away bamboo. in the question. Try again, Green. Um, let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. All right, teams. If you go down to the Smithsonian, you can listen to the recordings of Alexander Graham Bell that he made 130 years ago when he invented the telephone. One of the things you will hear is him saying over and over and over again the name of this B-initialed instrument that... Okay, Cora Rice. Okay, you didn't really get a lot of the information. What do you want to tell me? 
Montpelier, what B initialed instrument did Alexander Graham Bell keep repeating? An instrument that meteorologists use to measure air pressure. Barometer? Barometer or barometer? Yes, indeed. Good. Go green. Um. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, there is a new telescope at the South Pole that has an acronymic name that is the same name as this large muscle in your upper arm, Coral Rice. Bicep. Bicep's absolutely right. That's the name of the telescope. Good. Go red. Five point advantage. Where next, Leah Fan? Um, science Poopery for 20. Poopery for 20 points, teams. There is a comic strip called Prickly City. And recently they were trying to get to the root of all evil. And a cell, a picture of a cell with a gun, went up to another cell and said, give me all your blank. He wanted all of the C initial stuff that you find inside the cell with the nucleus that is in the middle of it. What's that C initial stuff in the cell that he said, give me all your what? Chloroplast. Not your chloroplast. Good try. Not give me all your chloroplast. Give me all your what, Mary? Chlorophyll? Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is what fills the cell. Go red. Um, body systems for 25. Body systems for 25. The big one in that category, teams. Three-part answer. As children, you've been to the doctor a lot. A lot of times you get amoxicillin. Sometimes that's a drug, that's a, an antibiotic. If you go to a doctor by the name of an auto rhino laryngologist, chances are he'll give you a prescription for amoxicillin because you might have an infection in this, this, or this. What are the three things that an auto rhino laryngologist treats? Maybe your heart because auto. Cora Rice. Throat, your, lungs. Your, your, your lungs? Not your lungs, no, Mon Your auto rhino laryngologist. You go as a kid, you got an infection, you're going to get a, a prescription for amoxicillin. They tr that doctor treats what three parts of the body? The oftentimes you get infected. Ear, nose, and throat. Go red. Theophan. Cora Rice. Come on, let's go. Mm, Dateline stands for 25. Okay, we haven't had much luck with those. Let's see if you do better this time. Teams have come up with a kind of mosquito that they are sterilizing and releasing into Florida to try to curb diseases down there. These, disease, these mosquitoes that they are developing in the lab are known as GMO things. G what is it? Montpelier? What is it? I just All right, everybody's talking. Oh. What do you want to tell me? Cora Rice, these mosquitoes are known as GMOs, genetically modified what's? Pass it to Rockhead. Organisms? That's what I want to hear. Good. Go. Red. Okay. Um, which one? Popery for 10. Popery for 10 points, teams. The most contagious disease in the world. 90% of the people exposed to it without vaccination will get it. Cora Rice. Rabies. Measles. 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 Measles is right, yes. Thank you, Tony, for insisting. Go Thea fan. Um, Dateline for 10. Dateline for 10. Dateline signs for 10 points, teams. Bed bugs. Ooh, they're coming back. They used to feed on bats. Then they started feeding on people when we moved into caves. But now they've specialized. Some bed bugs only feed on bats. Others only feed on people. So they are now evolving into two separate what's. Coral rice. Species? Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Two separate species. Thanks, Rakem. Go red. Dateline for five. Dateline five, for five points, teams. You can now turn your smartphone into a sniff phone. If you download one of these, they will let you breathe into it so that you can find out if you have certain diseases. You're just going to download a what? An app. An app. Yeah, good. Go. <laughs> um, okay. Um. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, <laughs> astronomers say that if you could find a swimming pool big enough, Saturn would float in it. Because what D initial quality? Pass it to Rock Kim. Density. What? Density, its density is so low. That's right. Good, go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the buzzer has rung. It looks like a surge there by Cora Rice has done it. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment. Don't go away.
How far would you go to help someone? Would you go to the end of your driveway? Would you cross a street? Would you cross an ocean? Would you go if you could use your knowledge to teach someone? And in the process, maybe learn something yourself. Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. And welcome back to Science Bowl. What a great second half we had here. Montpelier start piling up the points, as did Cora Rice. We're proud of all you guys. You played a really great game. And Montpelier, first time ever for all of you. You made a great impression here today. Our final tally is Montpelier 135, Cora Rice 200. Congratulations to Rakem and Theophan and Tony and Zainab. She's all smiles back there. The alternate Mr. Baker, thanks for all the hard work to get your students ready for today. We're going to see you in the next round. Let's see some smiles over there. You guys haven't realized yet you've won. Matthew and Mary and Jeffrey, let me see some nice big smiles. Fourth graders, you got a lot of competition left in you. I want to see you next year and the year after after that and a year after that. And Serena, thank you for being here today too. Loved having you on the team. And Bella, thank you so, for so much, for so many years, for sending us great teams here on Science Bowl. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Science Bowl. Bye-bye.